left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Garden's favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear Good morning, sir Have you ever stopped to consider the importance of brushes in your life? Brushes? There's airbrushes, paintbrushes, toilet brushes, toothbrushes, clothes brushes, all those soft bristles. You know, assortment of colours and sizes, half price, one time, special offer just for you, sir. Thank you. That's very kind of you. And it sounds like very good value. Thank you, but we don't need any brushes. Then how about some timepieces or a necklace for that beautiful neck? No, thank you, and good day. You must be wary of door-to-door -door salesman, Paddington. You're too trusting. Remember... You never get something for nothing in this world. I think door-to-door -door selling sounds interesting. I like the idea of helping people. Then you'll enjoy fetching the groceries. Here's some money. Don't forget to bring back the change. As I did Mrs Bird shopping, I thought about what she said. That you can't get something for nothing. And I wasn't sure she was right. After all, when the Browns found me at Paddington Station, they took me in and didn't ask for anything in return. Some people might think that Mr. Gruber gives me cocoa every day for nothing, but we have an arrangement. I always pay for the buns. Congratulations. Your character, drive and ambition is about to pay off. You have been chosen for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Earn a fortune meeting interesting people. We will contact you soon. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You don't get one of those every day of the week. Earn a fortune meeting interesting people. Aye, that sounds too good to be true. Exactly, Mr. Gruber. That's why we're warning people to be on the lookout for this con artist. Oh. He's pretending to be a vacuum cleaner salesman, but his vacuums are all broken. You'd be surprised at the number of people who actually fall for this kind of thing. I can think of one myself. <gasps> I'd like to earn a fortune and meet interesting people. The question is, where and when? Right here and now. Allow me to introduce myself, Mr... Uh... Brown. P P Paddington Brown. I'm from darkest Peru. Oh, how exotic. Well, I suppose it takes all sorts. <laughs> Did you get my note? Uh, oh, yes. Thank you, but um, uh, I seem to have lost it. No matter. Please excuse my appearance, but I've been busy all day helping people clean up and selling vacuum cleaners. Vacuum cleaners? Yes. And I am prepared to make you a one-time offer to join our happy band of vacuum consultants. Ask no questions, and I'll tell you no lies. This new cleaner deals with dirt, muck, ashes, soot, anything you like. Now, it just so happens you have caught me with my very last one. But because you seem a helpful sort of bear, you get our latest model cleaner. This list of do's and don'ts to help you make your very first sale. And a free hat. <laughs> now, how much are you prepared to pay for all of this? All I've got is Mrs. Bird's change. You don't get anything for nothing these days. That's just what Mrs. Bird said. You'll be able to pay her back out of the profits from your first sale. <laughs> You'll see me again. If I don't see you first. I could hardly believe my good fortune, and I was sure Mrs. Bird would change her opinion of door-to-door -door salesmen when she heard. I couldn't wait to get started. 
the do's and don'ts booklet had all the answers. All I had to do was find a likely customer. <laughs> Are you spying on me, Bear? Now, what's that you've got on your head? Ask no questions, and I'll tell you no lies. This new cleaner deals with dirt, muck, ashes, soot, anything you like. How would you like a free demonstration, Mr. Curry? Hmm. Free, you say? The price of chimney sweeps these days is highway robbery. This cleaner is particularly good with soot, Mr. Curry. It had better be. I'll be right back to keep an eye on things. Mr. Curry deserves a good demonstration because I think he falls under the heading of extremely difficult customers. That's more like it, but maybe he'll appreciate an even bigger demonstration. Bear! What is going on? You're supposed to clean up, not make more of a mess. Don't worry, Mr. Curry. It's all part of the demonstration. You, insert customer name, will agree that no ordinary cleaner could suck up this mess. For once in my life, Bear, we are in complete and utter accord. Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> Bear! Where are you? What are you doing? I'm looking for a socket to plug this in. Socket? I'll give you a socket. I don't have electricity. I use gas. What was good enough for my father is good enough for me. You had a father, Mr. Curry. Ah! This is an outrage. Someone's going to pay for this. Oh, oh thank goodness it's you, Mr. Brown. Oh, boy. We were worried about you. Worried? About me? Someone has been selling faulty vacuum cleaners down at the market, and I was worried something might have happened to you. It did. What do you take me for? Once is bad enough, but twice in the same morning! Please! Stop him! Stop him! Stop that man! Wait like I get my hands on him! Oh! Oh! Keep him away! He's crazy! Oh! Mr. Curry was such a hero for breaking up the vacuum cleaner racket that he didn't mind the mess I'd made. He got just what he deserved trying to trick you into cleaning his house for free. I hope you've learnt your lesson, Paddington. Oh, yes, Mrs. Bird. People who expect something for nothing usually end up with more than they bargain for. <laughs> Is this right, Mr. Gruber? Be one with the horse, Mr. Brown. Be one with the horse? But it's made of wood. My old friend Stan Miller will explain the finer points of horse racing to you when you meet him. He's been trying to win the Kentucky Derby for years, and he hopes this time he'll do it. That's why we're going to the United States. I want to include horse racing in my book, The World and Its Wonders. I think bears would make good horse racers, Mr. Gruber. Oh! You mean uh, jockeys, Mr. Brown? A horse racer is called a jockey. Harrington, meet Benton Star, a very powerful steed. Steed? It looks like a horse. Exactly, Mr. Brown. And this two-legged one is my jockey, Frankie. I think Betting Star likes marmalade. Well, don't you be feeding any of that to her. We don't want anything ruining her chances of winning the Derby. I never thought that marmalade could ruin anything. Except Mrs. Bird's tablecloth, but that was a very sticky chunk. The most important thing in horse racing is that the rider and horse communicate. That brings out the fire in the horse. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. I must say, Stan, these meringues are delicious. Why don't you hurry and get one before they are all gone, Mr. Brown? I'd never tasted a meringue before. Hmm, it looks like garlic. Ugh, 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 it's horrible. Ugh, I hope some marmalade will take the taste away. Ew, something sure. 
sure smells ripe around here. Hey, my marmalade. I thought I said no marmalade. I don't have time to play games. I have a race to get ready for. <clears throat> Sorry, betting star. You heard what Frankie said. Go! My foot! It's broken! I can't ride like this! What am I gonna do? Where's the jockey for Benton Star? Here I am. I'm afraid Frankie's broken his foot. Get your gear and step on the scale. Huh? 133! You're over the regulation. I'm overweight? It must have been that meringue. <laughs> you are here with someone else. But you have to lighten up or Burning Star is out of the race. I had to think fast, or Mr. Miller would be most upset. 130, check. Okay, you jocks, you got a race to ride. I wish I could remember what Mr. Miller said. Something about how to bring out the fire in a horse. Mrs. Bird always blows on her fires when she wants to get them going. Dear, where can Mr. Brown have got to? I do hope he doesn't miss the big race. Wow, Frankie is certainly getting betting star excited. Look at her go. I'm afraid it can't be Frankie. It's Mr. Brown. What? My big chance and you get stepped on. Don't you have any horse sense? It was that bear and his marmalade that did it. You should be thankful Betting Star is in the race at all. That bear, as you call him, even gave up his boots to ride. Does he know how to ride, Mr. Gruber? <laughs> he practiced a bit in my antique shop. This is terrible. It certainly is. The Browns promised to watch the Kentucky Derby on television, and they'll be looking out for Mr. Brown. They are in for quite a surprise. Paddington? Yes, it's Paddington, all right. The saddle was very slippery, so it was a good thing Frankie had given me back my marmalade. Some people think it's only good for eating. Suddenly, everything went quiet. Look at him go! Right, Mr. Brown, right! Do you think we could slow down just a little? That's Paddington, that's it! Come on! That's oh, my Paddington! No. Paddington! She's pulling away again! Whatever your bear's doing to that horse, it sure is working. He's doing what you told him. He's communicating. Go, betting star! Go! That's come on, Paddington, come on! You can do it, I just... Come on, Paddington! Hooray! You did it, Stan! The bear did it, and I can't wait to thank him. You'll have to catch him first. He's going around again. To think, Mr. Brown, you ate a whole head of garlic. One clove would have been bad enough. But a whole head. It's no wonder Betting Star ran so fast. Oh, I thought it was a meringue. She must have got the full force of the smell every time you breathed out. This will make an excellent chapter in my book, The World and Its Wonders. I think you should eat some garlic too, Frankie, before our next race. I can lend you some of my marmalade, Frankie. It did help take the taste away a little bit. <laughs> Just as long as it doesn't get rid of that winning aroma.
It was my summer birthday, and everything was wonderful. Until... Take a bath? I don't think very much of that as a birthday present. That's not the present part. Going to dinner at the Porchester is the present. Dad has invited Mr. Gruber, too. You want to look your best. After all, the Porchester is a famous restaurant, and it's very expensive. Only the best people go there. Your chair, monsieur. And what would you like for an hors d'oeuvre? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paddington, you are in for quite an experience. The Porchester is very hoity-toity. Hors d'oeuvre? Hoity-toity? It all sounded very complicated. So I decided to seek Mr. Gruber's advice. I have never been to the Porchester either, Mr. Brown. It'll be a nice change from Coco and Buns. That's what I'm worried about, Mr. Gruber. I've never eaten in a fancy restaurant before. There are many things to know. For example, let us pretend this is your hors d'oeuvre. Now, which fork would you use? Ah, uh -uh, Mr. Brown. Start hmm? from the outside and work your way in. Start from the outside? But how can I reach my food if I'm not even in the restaurant? I think perhaps it's a good thing you came to see me, Mr. Brown. Dear Aunt Lucy, in case you're wondering why there are a lot of smudges on this card, it's because I'm writing it in the bath, so I'll be nice and clean for our dinner out. I thought it would be better to have a bath after I'd eaten, but Mr. Gruber reminded me that I must look my best for the Porchester. A party of Browns. We booked a table near the orchestra? Is the young, uh, bear gentleman with you? With us? Where with him? Oh, uh, then I'm afraid you can't come in. The young, uh, bear gentleman isn't wearing the proper evening dress. Bears don't have mm. evening dress. They have evening fur. And I've had a bath. But the hat. It was given to me by my uncle in darkest Peru. I'm never without it. Oh, very well. We'll make an exception. This way, please. Monsieur. Thank you. <gasps> My menu's full of mistakes. Mistakes? There is never a mistake on a Porchester menu. Those aren't mistakes, Paddington. It's written in French. And we pride ourselves in the fact that there is nothing one cannot obtain at the Porchester. Well, in that case, I'll have a marmalade sandwich, please. With custard, since it's my birthday. A marmalade sandwich? With custard? For dinner? I like marmalade. And you said that one could obtain anything I want. Excuse me, Andre. I'd like a marmalade sandwich as well. You make a nice change. Thank you, Andre. As you wish, Monsieur. Uncle Ab! Suddenly everyone is wanting the marmalade sandwich. I bring Paddington to one of the finest restaurants, and he wants a marmalade sandwich. Oh! Perhaps you would care for an hors d'oeuvre while you wait? Hors d'oeuvre? But that looks like salad. Indeed. Thank you. It looks like a very good bargain. And I know which fork to use. It isn't all for you, Paddington. And you're not meant to eat it from the trolley. I thought dining out was supposed to be fun, but there are an awful lot of things you can't do. Oh! Ah! Couldn't I have my water in a glass, please? That's not for drinking. It's a poor bowl. A poor bowl? But I had a bath this afternoon. <clears throat> Since the young bear gentleman is having a marmalade sandwich, I assumed his paws might get sticky. <laughs> There's no mite about it. Where is Paddington? He said something about finding his onion. I think I know where it went. Well, don't tell Paddington. He'll only want it back. Ah, my omelette flambe. You don't want to miss this, Mr. Brown. 
My omelette is on fire. <gasps> Don't worry, Mr. Gruber. I'm coming. Oh, my omelette. Ow! I've got my onion back. Oh. This was your idea, Henry. <laughs> I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Throwing water over the food, onions in the clarinet, ordering marmalade sandwiches. You'll give the Portester a bad name. Nonsense. May I remind you that I ordered a marmalade sandwich too, and I'm still waiting. I asked for custard on mine. I think I shall ask for some as well. Huh? If that bear goes, we all go. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> Custard on both sandwiches, it shall be. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Sir Huntley Martin, the Marmalade King. Been in Marmalade for 50 years. Fancy being in Marmalade for 50 years. Been dining here for over 30 of them, and I've never seen anyone have so much fun. <laughs> Paddington usually has fun wherever he goes. I was a bit worried about coming to a famous restaurant like the Porchester, but luckily Mr. Gruber showed me exactly how to behave. Oh, oh <clears throat> no need to thank me, Mr. Brown. No need at all. Two marmalade sandwiches with custard. Thank you very much. I think I shall always come here to celebrate my birthday in future. And I think I may need that poor bowl after all. Oh, I'll have one, I'd like a marmalade sandwich, too. Oh,